Exodus chapter 34, verses 6 and 7, it says, The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, but who will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation. Let us pray. Father, we are coming before you today, a God who is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, but by no means, means will clear the guilty. God, thank you that you are a God of love and justice. And because of that, we are secure in you and we worship you for that. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You're the color that fills my dreams I hear your voice in quiet streams The familiar scent of spring When I'm with you Fills my whole being So I will stay
indeed, Lord, you are who we desire, Lord. And God, we wait upon you. We look to you, God. Thank you, Lord, for the love that you extend to us, although we are so undeserving. In that, and for that, we are grateful and thankful to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, before I begin with our uh, devotional today, let me invite you to our Holy Week devotional for the next for the next eight days next week, starting from Sunday to to and it will end in Resurrection Sunday. It's hard to believe that uh, we or we already have uh, uh, somehow celebrated two Holy Weeks during this pandemic, and while. You know, we don't know the end game of this pandemic. So, so much uncertainty. The Holy Week teaches us that we do know the end game of the world. That our Savior, our Lord, Jesus Christ, our King, who lived and suffered for us, and He died, but He rose up again victoriously, and we can share in that victory. So again, join us for next, year, next week's Holy Week devotional. Let us reflect on the, the goodness of our God, who He is, His love for us, and our victory in Him. So today we will continue on looking at God's um, attribute of being long-suffering. And let me read to you uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 8. We're going to take a look at this verse and see how our God is a long-suffering God. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says, But God shows His love for us, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In this short verse, we see how God demonstrates Him being long-suffering. In fact, the verse I read at the beginning of this devotional describes God as long-suffering. When you look at the word uh, or the phrase slow to anger in Exodus chapter 34, verse 6, that phrase is actually translated in different parts of the Old Testament as long-suffering. Most of the time, or most translation, translates it as patience. However, patience is a word that does not quite capture what slow to anger means. Because literally, slow to anger means... Uh, Long nostril. Um, since Hebrew is a picture word, it's interesting to note that when you talk about be being slow to anger, it talks about a flaring nostril, but it also describes it as long. I don't know if you've encountered someone who gets mad where their ears get red, and their nose get red, or they get flushed. Here it says that I guess it's a picture of someone having a long nose and it will take a long time for that whole nostril to flare up and, and, and be red and be flushed red. And so it talks about, and it's a picture of long suffering. And while Exodus 34, 6 describes God as long suffering, Romans chapter 5, verse 8 demonstrates how He is long suffering. Let me read that to you again. The first part, it says, But God shows His love for us. See, one expression of God's love for us is Him being long-suffering. I don't know about you, but if you love someone, pag may ninamahal ka, di ba, you're very patient. You're, you're, uh, you're, very, you're, you're willing to bear uh, 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 when there's shortcoming, when there is an offense, uh, when there's things that is not, um, is not right in your relationship, you're willing to be patient. But just like what I said a while ago, being, long, being in a state of, or be, having this attribute of long suffering is more, uh, is not just being patient. It's more than that. Um, although patience is a component of long suffering, one critical thing that we must add to patience is this. The burden or the load that comes while being patient. Because patience is the ability to be able to wait. You know, uh, being able to, the ability to accept delay. 
However, it's different when you already have a burden or a load. Like for me, I'm able to wait when, uh, for someone when I'm in a comfortable place, where maybe in a, if I'm meeting someone and I'm in an air-conditioned uh, environment, very comfortable for me, then I'm able to be patient. But what if that place is hot, humid, now there's a bit of a burden, now there's a bit of a load. Now for someone to be long-suffering, you're not just to be patient, you must be patient while bearing a certain burden or load. And that's what it means for God to be long-suffering. He's not just waiting on us because He loves us. But there is, in this verse, in Romans 5, 8, it talks about His love being ex expressed as long-suffering. And it also speaks of the load or the burden He carries while He waits on us. And it's here, it's said here. It says that, but God shows His love for us in that while we were still sinners. Now, this phrase, while we were still sinners, speaks of waiting, speaks of a long period, and speaks of the load. So let's take a look at that, that phrase. When you say, while we were still, the word still means an, a state of continuation, an ongoing state. Uh, a, um, um, a, something that is happening again and again. In a way, it's something persistent. So it says, it says here that there is a state wherein we are in a state of continuing to be doing something or to being something. And after the word still is the word sinner or our sins. And if you put those two together, God is a God who demonstrates His long-suffering, His love for us through long-suffering by even while we were still sinners, that even while we are in an ongoing state of sin, sin in the form of offense, sin in the form of iniquity, sin in the form of transgression, sin in the form of offending God, even while we were in that state, God demonstrates His love for us. You know, when I look at that, how, um, how amazing and that, that verse is, that part of, that first part, I look, I look at myself. I mean, I, it would be very difficult for me to exercise long-suffering, especially when offended. I catch myself in my frailty and humanity when I'm offended, when I'm crossed, I immediately, um, you, know, um, you know, sometimes it gets the best of me. I, you know, answer back. I, so having seen this, and it's, again, it's because of that being able to bear that load of offense. And that is God to us. Imagine us constantly and persistently offending Him. But yet, He still chooses to demonstrate His love for us. For me, it's so hard to picture myself being like that, be in, in my frailty, in my weakness. And that's why this characteristic of God, this attribute of God, causes me to really be in worship and be, be in awe of how God could be patient even with a person like me. I mean, when I, every single day I wake up, it's a display of God's long suffering towards me. Because I, I often think to myself, if I were God and I see myself, I would have judged judge me immediately because of my thoughts, even my actions, how so many times I fall short of, of God's standard. But the good news is, it says here, that in the midst of us, still being sinners, in an ongoing state of rebellion, God demonstrates His love for us. And you know what is the ultimate demonstration of God's love? It's the last phrase. And I want to conclude with that last phrase. It says, Christ died for us. 
And I want you to listen to this. Because God longs for us, He was willing through Christ to go through suffering for us. Through Christ, He bore not just us being sinners, not just, He did not just, uh, He was not just patient and long suffering uh, in terms of us sinning against Him, but what He did was in not just more than just bearing against our offense, He bore the penalty of our offense. He suffered and bore our sins. And when we receive Him, when we turn to Him, we then belong to Him. See, God is indeed a long-suffering God. He expresses and demonstrates His love for us through long suffering. And through Christ, His longing for us was fulfilled because Christ, through Christ, He bore our sins, the penalty of our sin. And now we can have a vibrant relationship with Him. And that's why as we celebrate and reflect on, reflect and celebrate Holy Week, on the Holy Week next week, I pray that we would see the extent of God's love, how He demonstrated it to us, and how His long suffering continues. Because even though we have surrendered our life to Christ, many times we fall short. We sin against Him. We offend Him. Yet He remains faithful. Yet He continues to bless us. And He continues to look at the finished work of His Son, Jesus Christ, so that when He looks at us, we are clean, we are justified, and we can enter into this great relationship with Him. M that's my prayer, that we would have that revelation of God's love expressed through Him being long-suffering. Let us pray. Father, we are again grateful for your love towards us. We are undeserving. We always fall short. Yet, you continue to be patient while bearing the burdens of our offenses and our sins. And Lord, thank you for the finished work of Christ that because He bore the penalty, Lord, we are we are saved. We are delivered from our sins. And for that, Lord, may we respond to you in ever-increasing worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. How can I forget you? How can I forget you? How can I forget the love that set me free? How can I forget you? How can I forget you? How can I forget the love that set me free? Jesus, I surrender. Jesus, I surrender. Open up my heart to all your plans for me, yes. Jesus, I surrender. Jesus, I surrender. Open up my heart to all your plans for me, yeah. So I will stay. La 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 la
again, Exodus chapter 34, verse 6. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God, merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Lord, I pray that we, all of us, would have a revelation of how gracious, how merciful, how long-suffering, Lord, and how faithful you are to us. Thank you for your love. Lord, may your love continue to secure us. Lord, speak that blessing to all of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.